asked that way. I don't know the answer to that, but nobody does. All I do know is uh, best to get along and be, and be friendly with each other and be a place like this place called America. This place is the greatest place that has ever been made. And all of us here are immigrants. Eh, I'm here two generations from my end. You're here none? One, zero, five? What difference does it make? We're here. It's the here and now, and we're in this great library, this wonderful library. When I was a kid, I grew up, I used to come to this library, this very place where I'm standing, I'd be sitting reading. I love this place because this is what it's truly about, a free place that allows you, in a day when everything is commercial, this place allows you to take books out, records, tapes. Think about that. Free. You can walk out that door, I take a whole bunch of stuff. Where else could this happen? Where else does it happen in the whole world? Where all of us can get together and talk about things like time, the calendar, and about being alive. Yeah, being alive. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in your opinion, the Big Bang, you know, Big Ben, the big clock. Big Bang. Okay. Yep. A new then oh, the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, oh, oh. The big Bang Theory, okay. <coughs> when the new planet is created, that is the beginning of the time for that planet? Well, I would say, doesn't that make logical yeah. sense? That makes sense for that, but so it's like, a, it's like saying, planet. how come Rome time stopped? Who decided that Rome time stopped? Remember we said Julius Caesar changed the calendar in the year 709 of Rome time. How is it that Rome time stopped? Well, because Rome wasn't powerful anymore. And so someone else decided we're changing. Remember I said before, we're going to start with one right here and now? Someone did it. <laughs> and so Roman time, boop, boop the side. So in your case, the Big Bang, a new planet, a new star, yes, they just started at that point. But time is always there. It was always there. It, it seems, it seems logically enough to say, that, it's always there. That well, you could say, you could state that that planet, that star, just they started at this point. Right but does that mean back. it's time just started then? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> tough one, tough one. Yes, anyone else? Yes. <laughs> That's, well, I have a whole thing. You, if you're really interested, I could tell you. All right, I'll tell you. I, I pulled that away. I didn't want to, uh... And then, um, like in December, it is, or November, uh, That's called standard time, Eastern Standard Time. Right. Well, here we go. I'll make it nice and simple for you. Daylight Savings Time, it's called Daylight Savings Time, was signed into law by Woodrow Wilson, President Wilson, in 1918. It was, the idea was to save fuel and promote efficiency during World War I. That's when we were fighting in World War I. It was repealed in 1919, but then reintroduced during World War II. Um, it was also called wartime. Okay, so this is all fairly recent. Um, it was officially established the five time zones, Eastern, Central, Mountain, Pacific, <coughs> excuse me, and Alaskan. In 1966, the Uniform Time Act was passed. Uh, um, what they're calling a daylight savings time would be observed between the last Sundays in April and October. However, a state, in other words, the state of Indiana, as it turns out, could, it sta could have exempt itself. And in fact, the state of Arizona, and parts of Indiana were left out. So you actually have, they have different time in different counties in Indiana and in Arizona. Um, let's see what else we have. The energy crisis of 1973 promoted almost a year long daylight savings time until the end of 1975. Then they returned to it in 1986. It was moved again to the first Sunday in April. I, the truth is, I think this is gonna be bumped because it's crazy. You got all these kids up in the morning you know, waiting in the dark. What's the point of that? You know, trying to make it lighter. But then at night, they're in the dark anyway, coming home. And there's nothing worse for our circadian clock to be working and coming out at 4.45 and seeing that it's dark, right? There's no point to that. So we lose that extra hour and it's tough to get home. I don't think it'll last. 
I think it's going to be a blip that I'll talk about in 20 years. May, you suffer from May, June, July. They're all, that's when you. All the daylight. That's right. That's, the that's point. right. Yeah. The well, the problem is the part that you're not, you're dumping in the earlier part when you go fall ahead. That's the problem. It's the winter that's the problem. <coughs> Anybody else? Uh, I have a question about that, uh, the rain from the tree. Yes. Uh, you said that uh, uh, trees are considered living. Uh, rocks considered living things? Like no. Fruit? No. Rocks are minerals. <coughs> living things are things that have some living, I mean, think what's living, what isn't. Everything around here, other than us, we think is living. But there's bacteria around, bugs and things that, they're living. But inanimate objects, well, minerals are not. That's, well, you can, there's a question now about bacteria and about, you know, a sponge. A, they're not sure if a sponge is a, is a plant or an animal, but certainly alive, because it grows. It's an animal. It takes it in, it takes it out. Yeah, they're calling it an animal. Now they're calling it an animal. A whole, it's a bunch of animals that get together. Well, petrified trees, what's that over? Well, all that is, is means that that tree has turned into stone. It's been mineralized. But that's a very good question. That's, in fact, I'm sure it's bothered you for years. That's what I was trying yeah, to I understand. No, I understand perfectly. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. That's it? Complete five no minutes, I'll be leaving. Um, well, it's a whole subject on this. It's quite interesting because people, each, each society change their names all the time. Just like the naming of the days of the week yeah. are very interesting. But the naming of the days of the week are more of the English and Anglo-Saxon and German. The naming of the, uh, of the months of the year is Roman. July is Julius. August is Augustus. Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar. That's how they, they named all these things. September is something else, but it's, it was all Roman in, in their style. So we've been using the same calendar names for 2,000 years. But that's only, that's only in the English language. In, in um, uh, French and Spanish, it's different. And they don't really match up. No, they don't match up. And the Germans don't match up necess necessarily. They use some of their ancient gods. But the ones we use in the English language happen to be the Roman very intriguing how that is. It's just, you know, force of habit is a very hard thing to change. <laughs> very hard thing to change. One thing I want to, I mean, I didn't exactly go into it too much, uh, was the 60 minutes and 60 seconds. Right, no, I didn't go into it much at all. Yeah. It's a huge subject. It's a huge subject, but it seems to be the Babylonians established a 60-60 ideal. I mean, why would they pick 60? Think about that. A hundred makes a lot of sense. Ten, everything that's based on a ten, base ten makes sense. We have ten fingers, ten toes. It makes a lot of sense to base things on that. Sixty or twenty, even the, uh, the Mayans were doing it. Sixty-year cycles. I, why? We're not really sure. It just seems that it's, they felt that it was lucky. I believe they thought it was lucky numbers. And so they worked from that. But it's a very big subject. Enormous. You know, we've just capsulized the history of the world, of the human species, in a very small amount of time. Uh, and so these are very big subjects, very big. But at least it gives you some idea. And you'll never forget the year 2000 won't have February 29th. <laughs> Why 2K? Uh, do you think there's going to be something? No. No. No, I don't. No, not in America, anyway. No. Most everybody has new computers anyway, and it's been adjusted for. Uh, could it happen that there's a problem in, uh, you know, in, in the Russian, the former Russian states of the USSR? Yeah, it could possibly happen there. But uh, no, I don't expect anything to happen. Does the library have a problem? Where's the li where is, uh, it's not even here. Uh, you know, they've adjusted all their things. They're not worried about anything. No, nah, it's not a problem. And the bank system is all, I mean, they're not going to lose any money. Remember, nobody's going to lose money. They may say that there's a problem in order to get your money, but they're not going to lose any money. So, so they're going to work this out. They have plenty of time to figure out what the problem is going to be. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's the, right, it's the press uh, having some. After Clinton, you know, it's tough to come up with something interesting, right? <laughs> so be it. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Dr.